Buy without a prescription. The headache is gone. The shoulder pains have gone. Extra strength Tylenol would now be my number one choice. Extra strength Tylenol. You can't buy a more potent pain reliever without a prescription. The dessert chef at Mario's made that special for you with Column Bay rum. Lots of it. Jared, try it. Oh, I'm not hungry, sir. Great. My chef knocks himself out to prepare this dinner, and you're not even hungry. Nobody asked you to make a big production. I thought a celebration was in order. It's not every day a man who's been paralyzed for 10 years gets up and walks. <laughs> so some would hardly call it walking. It's more like a shuffle than a fall. What is bugging you? If I had to take a wild guess, I'd say uh, Clarissa McCann. It's all over, Zed. I pushed it too far and I blew it. Why, what'd you do? I kissed her. Well, it doesn't sound like a bad move to me. How'd she react? She slap you? No. She respond? Yeah. In a way. But the problem is that, that it scared the hell out of her. Now, she's backed all the way off now. She won't come to my therapy sessions anymore. She's too busy with her wedding. That's understandable. Her being a little confused. Would you give her some time? I there is no time, Zed. She's marrying Denning in less than three weeks, and there's not one thing I can do about it. Whether I'm out of this chair or not, I'm on my way back to Colum Bay by November the 15th. Jared, you could stop that wedding with just three words. Yeah, what? I love you, forget it. That can come later. Try I'm Baxter McCandless. You know, there's a lot of wonderful, fine restaurants in Washington, but none of them can come close to a quiet dinner at home with you. <laughs> you realize it's going to be less than a month before you and I are make having dinner in our own home? Yes, if I ever get it all together. <laughs> I was supposed to go shopping with Julie for my wedding dress today, and then I got held up by the decorator at the house, and they paid me late for my meeting with the caterer, and I'm sure you get the whole idea. <laughs> well, I was worried that you might miss the hospital, but I suppose you really haven't had time. No, I really okay. haven't, not yet. But I do have something I want to ask you. What's that? Well, it's just that this past week, Paula made some insinuating remarks about Jarrett Morgan and me, as only she can, and... Knowing Paula, I just can't believe that she... that she hadn't made them to you, too. She did. I ignored them. Well, sometimes Paula's a little hard to ignore, and that's what I want to talk to you about. I want to make sure... I want to make sure that my friendship with Jarrett Morgan has not bothered you. I have to admit, there was a tinge of jealousy there. But we're only friends, and you know that. Of course, I know that. I mean, for your point of view, but it's also obvious that he got very attached to you. Just because I was with him at a very important time in his life. You know, when he started to walk again. And, quite frankly, that made me very uncomfortable, and I told him that I would not be able to come to any of his therapy sessions anymore. Well, that's probably a very good idea. How did he take that? Well, I think he's going to miss me. <laughs> Of course he is. I would, too, you know, in his place. You know, you see, Donna, you're a very warm and beautiful woman. It would have surprised me a lot if he hadn't fallen in love with you. Oh, but it never went as far as anything like that. Well, it's, um, the point I was trying to make it very poorly is I'm going to have to realize that there are a lot of men going to find my wife very attractive. I certainly am not going to hide you in a house. I mean, you better not. You know, I, uh, I never had a, a real partner before. Partner. You know, even before her illness, Paula just wasn't up to entertaining or campaigning, and she hated anything that went along with being a senator's wife. <laughs> but now, <laughs> now, now, my darling, I have the most attractive, the most desirable woman in Washington by my side. <laughs> Do you think that maybe you're just the tiniest little bit prejudiced? Oh, of course not. <laughs> no. I didn't tell you because I promised Kelly I wouldn't. You don't think I have a right to know about my first grandchild? My own flesh and blood? Kelly is terrified of you, Dad. She was afraid you would try to take Scotty away from her. This is not about Kelly. 
It's about you, me, and your son. Do you um, have a picture of him? Yes, why? Well, I'd like to see what my first grandchild looks like. Anything strange about that? Well, actually, you met him. When he was at Julie's, he's grown up a, a lot. Looks like a clay. Good. May I uh, keep it? All right. I hope you can understand my decision now, Dad. I mean, it's just, it's not just my love for Kelly I'm fighting for, it's my family. You're destroying your family, Trey. I can't give in to Sloan. I won't do it, Dad. But you can send your own father to jail. No, I, I won't submit to blackmail. But I know Sloan. When the deadline comes, she won't go to the Attorney General. Now, don't kid yourself, Trey. If you go through with your divorce, Sloan will carry out a threat, and I'll go straight to jail. The family will be ruined. And that includes your son because he'll have to live with that heritage all the rest of his life. Time's running out, Trey. I suggest you go home, look at your son, and think of what you're doing. Hallmark's ready for Halloween. 